Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Seattle to Unknown. I am Melinda. And I'm Sarah. And we are a mostly weekly travel podcast. Yeah, just not December weekly. January. January. Oops, that. It's December right now. This is true. Currently. It's happening. We didn't skip it as much as I'd like to. We have not skipped December. I don't want to skip December. I just want to skip all the stress leading up to the holidays. No, I'm fine with skipping all of, like, December. All the December babies will just have a, like, major party in the new year for you. We won't forget (laughs) you. Just just an yeah. IOU party. There's a, there's a special, like, sort of, like, festive asshole that comes out of everybody. It's I'm not, not my favorite. I'm festive. I'm just asshole. No, no. It's different. It's different. No, I know. I'm just saying that personally, I don't get festive, so I just turn into a regular asshole. No, no, it's festive because it's, you know, after Thanksgiving and before Christmas... Or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or any other December celebration. There's a different sort of festive. Apparently there's a lot of, uh, a lot more domestic calls this time of year. This is true. I think, is it the Super Bowl or Thanksgiving that's the number one date for domestic violence calls? I don't know about dates, but apparently this time of year they go up. Like, ridiculously so. That's a fun festive topic to start the episode with. <laughs> I'm just saying. December, you special. Speaking of things that make you want to drink, do you have a cocktail for this week? I have pressed apple cider. Ooh. Oh, just apple juice. Just kidding. It's just fancy apple juice. <laughs> Similar. It's not actually cider. I lied. It's apple juice, but it's delicious. Mm, it's beautiful festive. and amber and cloudy. Oh, I don't want the word cloudy involved with anything I consume. Yeah, but when you get like treetop apple juice and it's just like clear, it's like it's not that great. This is the real shit. Made with real apples. But speaking about apples, one of the good things to happen in December, those cosmic apples have come out. So I I need to try one. What's a cosmic Cosmic crisp? It's a cosmic crisp. It's a mix between um, honey crisp apple and something else, but it's only grown here in Washington. Because, you know, we a fancy apple state. Hmm. Maybe I'll add that to my list of things to do while I'm home. They're hella expensive, but I just want one. And I will pay way too much money for one. Yeah, that's usually how it works. You try it once and then you never have to do it again. Unless it's delicious and then you gotta you gotta wait. Fair enough. They're way too expensive. But yeah. How expensive is expensive? Are we talking $50 for an apple? No, but it's three forty nine per pound. Oh. And they're big apples. They're not small apples. So, like, I sold six of them to one person, and it was, like, 26-something for just the apples. Yeah. So they might as well be $50 a pop. That reminds me of the grapes in Japan. Each individual grape is supposed to be 50 grams, and a bunch of them can be upwards of $1,000. Not $1,000 I'm disappointed we didn't get the bougie grapes. <laughs> like, can we have a sample of one bougie grape, please? You get a sliver <laughs> as your sample, and then you're still giving them twenty bucks for that <laughs> sliver of a grape. Pretty much. Yeah. I guess we're trying to get on Japan's level of fancy fruit. I guess. I don't know if we'll ever be quite that fancy though. Nah. But we can pretend it's cool. So, I think that uh, covered my update and my cocktail. What's going on in your world? <laughs> my cocktail tonight is Limonata al Limone, which is uh, lemonade of lemon. So uh, I've just got a lemonade in a can. <laughs> Why is it in a can? Because everything is in a can. 
Because it's recyclable. It's very, very tart. But really good. But also very, very tart. I'm puckering a little bit. And your update? Does it involve uh, lemons? No. Then I don't want to hear about it. Mine correlated. Okay, next segment. <laughs> okay, moving on. No, what's no, your update? My update is that I... So our office has quarterly parties, and tomorrow is our Christmas party. But I've also, like, triple booked this night. I have the Christmas party. I have to take the dog to the vet. And I'm working late on a project that is due tomorrow. So I don't know if one, two, three, or any of these things are going to happen. But what I do know is that I ordered myself a dress to wear to the Christmas party because I just don't have any dresses anymore. I have nothing nice because when you work in an office with no dress code, my tendency personally is to slum a little bit and look a little, oops, and look a little, um. She looks homeless. Let's be honest. Homeless. She looks so, homeless. I ordered this dress a week and a half ago with express overnight shipping, and it is not here. Apparently, we have different definitions of express and overnight. Yeah, you know, I would think if not one of those words covering me, then both of them should have covered me. Like Sucker. So I had to, I stayed late tonight at work because, well, not that late, but relatively late. Because my report wouldn't generate for this project that's due tomorrow. And then I realized, shit, I don't have clothing to wear tomorrow. So I ran to the store, grabbed literally the first two festive articles of clothing I could find. I was like, look, sweater, look, red pants, get out of here now. And then I booked it home, only to find out that the dog had eaten all of the pet food. And I had nothing to feed the cat. And, uh... Yeah, so we'll see what happens tomorrow, because if today is any indication, tomorrow's going to be real fun. I have a cat. Congratulations, I'm happy for you. Allie came downstairs to say hi and hang out with me. Yeah, well, Birdie is sitting next to me, but facing away from me. In she kind of hates you right now. You forgot about her. And our eating needs. I did not forget about her. I had plenty of food when I left this morning. It's not my fault. You forgot that your dog's like part hippo. Yeah. It's not my fault he's such an a-hole when it comes to food. But alas, that is my update. Come back next week to find out if I made it to the party or not. I'm waiting for a Cinderella moment. Right? But it's going to be like Hobo Cinderella, where you're just too <laughs> drunk and you're like singing with the street rats. Yeah, that was, I tweeted a couple hours ago. I was like, where the hell is my fairy godmother? I have a ball to go to and nothing to wear. I was told as a child that this would be su- resolved by a sagely older woman with a wand. Ooh, I'm sorry. Billy Porter is busy right now and can't come <laughs> help you. Yeah, That's well, who I want to be my fairy godmother. Rude. Uh, I want Bernadette Peters from the 90s Brandy version of Cinderella. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd be okay with that, too. Especially since in this equation, I would be Brandy before she accidentally killed that guy. Well, where's the fun in that? (laughs) That's when you need the fairy godmother. No, no, I want to be the Brandy who still has a career. No, it's fine. Uh, speaking of royalty like Cinderella, oh, that's one of my better segues. And then I, I think derailed that's your it. that's only good segue. <laughs> and then I derailed it by stopping to pat myself on the back. Yep. It's a real slam dunk over here, if you ask me. Anyway, so for this week's news story, it's not so much a news story as it is, um... An article that I read somewhere about 20 rules that the royal family has to follow when they travel the world. And when I say the royal family, I mean 
the royal family of England because, well, of all of the UK, but, you know, they're in England. Because apparently when you say royals, that is the default assumption. It must be that royal family, right? I think it's, like, the only royal family that everybody, maybe not everybody, but a lot of the world is obsessed with. Mm Mm-hmm. We don't talk about the royal family of, you know, Norway or Sweden. We should. Maybe or, they're more interesting. I, I want crown in spinoffs. <laughs> I want spinoffs of the crown for other countries. Because if this family is so messy and dramatic, surely they all are. I would assume so. And I get. I feel like it could get some like different drama based on where the families are from. This could be good. Dear Netflix, we've got a pitch for you. <laughs> More royal drama. But let's branch out from the, the English. So this list is all things that they are required to do whenever they are out and about. Uh, some of them are really stupid, so I'm not going to go over every single one of them. Because you would not be surprised to learn that they are required to accept gifts. Who knew? If someone hands you a gift, you're supposed to do the polite thing and say thank you. But there are some other rules that are slightly more interesting and a little bit creepy. So there's really basic things like when they travel commercial, they must travel British Airways. No Ryanair for the future King of England. Who knew? Although I would kind of love to see that. (laughs) I feel like most people will realize that they're not going to be taking a budget airline that's like you get a sandwich bag and that's your carry on right but on the other hand when they're trying to show that they aren't just a giant pit of money for the country saying hey you get a carry on bag only that would be kind of funny but anyway uh the next one is that they must travel with two of every single outfit so if ever there were, like, a spaghetti spilling incident, they could immediately oh, no, no, go no. change. They probably are restricted on what foods they can eat while in public. <laughs> they are indeed. But interestingly enough, the only big thing on the list is that they are not allowed to ever eat shellfish. Like, ever? Not even ever. at home? Ever. Because the queen Why? does not like shellfish, and therefore she does not want any association with it, or something to that. Okay, that's fair. (laughs) Don't want to smell it. I get it. And keeping in line with clothing. But as someone who packs minimally, the idea of carrying two of every single article of clothing. Oh, oh God, so much baggage. So much baggage. Yeah, but you don't have to carry it. You're a fucking royal. You've got people to do that for you. Oh, and in fact, when some of the female members of the family travel... They always book the seat next to them so that they never have anyone by them. And they use that other seat for their dresses. Yeah. I don't know why you're surprised by this. It makes perfect sense to me. This is how I'm going to start traveling. (laughs) New year, new travel style. (laughs) Uh, The next item on the list is also to do with clothing. And that's every time they travel, they must bring at least one outfit with them. And two copies of it, because gotta have two of it, that is all black, in case someone in the family dies while they're away. Because it would be seen as improper if you landed in London, went to get off the plane, and you were wearing something that was not mourning clothing. And this is all because back in the 50s, 1952, I think, uh, Queen Elizabeth, back when she was still the princess, was on a tour of Kenya, And her father passed away while she was traveling. So they flew her back and she had to sit on the plane and wait until someone delivered a black outfit to her so that she could get off the plane wearing all black. That sucks. Yeah, that seems like a huge amount of formality. I don't think there's anyone who could be like, well, her father died. How dare she step off the plane in an outfit that's blue? She was traveling. Her dad died. Who gives a fuck? Let her go home and get Yeah, but I and... get it. When you're the royal monarchy and everything's prim and proper and you're in the public's eye so much, I get it. I get it, it too. sucks. It's a little silly, but I get it. 
I get it, but I don't think anybody would be like, what a bitch. Like, no. I'm sorry, have you seen American tabloid magazines? They talk <laughs> about the royals all the time. So yeah, there there would be. Uh, it would be, Princess Elizabeth has no regard for father's passing, steps out on blue dress. Yeah, but this was slightly pre-internet tabloidy stuff. These aren't internet, these are printed. No, I know, but these, like... People are saving these and they're like, oh, do you remember back in 1952 when she wore a blue dress after her <laughs> father died? Could you believe it? And oh they God. still let her reign for like 75 years? I don't know how long it's been. A long time. It's been a long time, yep. But, excuse me, actually, I do know how long it was because she was coronated the year my mom was born. So if I don't know that number off the top of my head, that's pretty bad. But, um... Remember that coronation spoon at her coronation? (laughs) You do so love a coronation spoon. I do. It was so lovely. So practical. But on a similarly morbid line of thought two heirs are not allowed to travel together so if you are number one in succession and number two you are technically not allowed to travel on the same plane they bend that rule a little bit because like third in line has to travel with fourth and or second in line has to travel with third in line fairly often because it's father and son and they don't generally let like a five-year-old travel by himself unaccompanied minors (laughs) Just a tiny prince running up and down the aisles of the plane screaming, Wah! I'm the king of England. Like, no, not like, yet. Sit back down, child. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's still alive. Sit down. <laughs> uh, here's a slightly weirder rule. When they are out traveling, visiting people and whatnot, they aren't allowed to remove their jacket unless invited to do so. So if they're visiting, like, I don't know, a school meeting the children and whatnot if someone doesn't walk up to them expressly say would you like to remove your jacket they can't hashtag forever sweaty (laughs) they also like if it's hot out and you are outdoors tough you must wear that jacket well that's also assuming that they stepped out with a jacket too no they must go outside with a jacket on oh Hashtag forever sweaty. Yeah. It's mm, interesting. And lastly, the... I mean, there were other items on the list, but the last one that I found interesting is that if you are pregnant, you may not travel. Doesn't matter how far along you are, there will be no air travel for you. No, you gotta protect the royal line. The notable exception would be when... What's her bucket? Uh, Meghan Markle was pregnant. She snuck off to New York for a little while. But technically she was not supposed to do that. I think she probably has slightly more leeway because she's not in the line of succession, nor will her children. Well, her children are, but they're pretty far They're down, down the, the line. line, aren't they? Yeah. I think that her kid's like eighth in line? Seventh? Something like that? Did Are they like... Are they still princes? Princes? They're all boys, right? Or the one's a boy? How many uh, kids do they have? They keep the pumping older, them out. I can't keep track. The older one has three. The younger brother has one. Yeah. So chances are that they're not going to work their way from Charles, William, George, Charlotte, Louis, Harry, and then hit Archie. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. No, and if it does, that's super tragic. Yeah. That would be... Unless they abdicate or something, but... So, uh... Oh, royals. royals. They're not like us. <laughs> what? I thought they were. No, no. No, no. I've watched The Crown. They are very much not like us. I started to, and then I just didn't get that far in. Not that I didn't like it, I just... Don't have time to watch anything that I actually have to pay attention to. Yeah, and I think the first two episodes aren't necessarily stodgy, but they're much more slower paced than it ends up being. That's because it's setting everything up. Yeah, it's exactly. very informal. Once you get into actual historic events, I don't think it's necessarily their lives that are super interested, 
it's how they react to extreme events that occur in English history. British history. You know what I mean. Ah, British history. Where the history comes from. Yeah, I'm just excited for next season when we finally get into, like, the dirty laundry of Diana and Fergie and all that fun stuff. We got to meet Camilla this season. Uh, How many seasons are there? There are currently three. I (laughs) I didn't even know that. I think there are plans to do six. Well, at a certain point, you're just, like, it just becomes reality TV. Yeah, exactly. And that's no fun. Yeah. I just want to get through the 90s. Like, once we're through the 90s, eh, it's fine after that, but less interesting. You don't want to watch a recreation of the royal weddings? Okay, I can't lie. I would kind of like to see who they would cast oh, gosh. for those roles. <laughs> but I think you need the perspective of, like, it being in the past. It has to be 20 years in the past for it to be... Well done. Oh, man. The <laughs> 90s were 20 years ago? Uh-huh. Oh, that hurts. Mm-hmm. That hurts. That's a little scary. We're going to hit a new decade. Not just a new year, but a new decade. Mm-hmm. That's how time works. And I'm pretty sure our 20s are not going to be nearly as cool as the 1920s. But probably a lot cooler than the 1820s. Less death. But potentially just as volatile. So, you know. There's always that. Let's skip over that part. Let's not do that. Yeah, but do you know what comes after the 20s? The 30s and 40s. Those were not a hot time period for us. I'd like to skip that too. I mean, history repeats itself, but it shouldn't be like exact copies, right? Well, I'm going to say the teens were not quite like the 19-teens, so hopefully we're okay. The (laughs) 19-teens? You know what I meant. Oh my gosh. We have lived through two separate centuries. You have to get specific when you're talking about your teens and your 20s. The (laughs) (laughs) 19-teens. Were those good years? Were you there? I feel like I must have been. That's a little concerning. I feel like you should be wiser if you're around in the 19-teens. No. I am certainly not. (laughs) No. No. But you should be. If you were there, you were there. But anyways, speaking about a new decade and a new year, we kind of want to talk I guess do like a a 2019 wrap up and like a 2020 goals. I don't like resolutions. That sounds, I don't like that. I mean, they're synonyms, but okay. (laughs) I feel like goals are something that's actually like something you achieve and resolutions are things that you forget about two weeks in. Well, if you resolve to do them, you do not. How many people's New Year's resolutions actually, like, full circle through? Mine did this year. It was really small, but I actually did it. I don't make resolutions. Maybe you should resolve to do so. No. I'm, like, anti-New Year resolutions because that makes it things, like, seem like it should only be once a year. And then I think people make too lofty of things and like baby steps you gotta make little goals little achievable goals that's fine i mean it's all how you do it for yourself if you don't set super lofty goals then uh you can achieve them my resolution's not to make a resolution uh you already did does that work i mean it's cheating but sure Wow. Why you gotta hate on my resolution? Ow. I scratched myself. Oh, that was one of the other bad things that happened today. Uh, I was in a meeting with someone and I scratched my ankle. And my ankle felt warm. 
And I was like, what is going on? And when I got out of the meeting, I realized my ankle was just covered in blood. Are you Wolverine now? I don't understand. I had a cut. I had cut my ankle on some boots a couple weeks ago, and I just scratched it back open by accident. Ew. But uh, the inside of my shoes are nice and gross now. Thought you should know. Anyway, do you want to talk about our goals? No, I'm horrified by this. <laughs> I told Yuck. you today was a rough day. <clears throat> Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody. <laughs> okay. What are your goals for this year? Or for next year? I don't even know as for next year necessarily. I don't know. I'm still trying to get myself to Peru one way or another. Um, I think the plan might be to go to Colorado and check out the Stanley Hotel. Mm-hmm. For a vacation for Mike and I. Um, I guess that's only the major ones I have. I don't know. Too busy to think about this stuff right now. <laughs> so are there any... I'm also not a resolution person. Okay, well, when you go to Peru, what is what are you most looking forward to? Llamas, gold, and Machu Picchu. And food. Always gold. the food. Gold. Tell me more about this. What is the... You want to see gold? Do you want to get gold? Yeah, like, all of the above would be cool. I would not be opposed to getting gold. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of museums and whatnot mm-hmm. there, too, that I would like to check out. Okay, I just want to confirm that you're just checking out the gold and not stealing the gold. No, no, no. I'm not going to steal gold from the museums, but if I find gold, it's probably going to go with me. I just like the idea of you walking around Peru, pointing at people wearing gold jewelry and being like, finders keepers. Okay, I found it. Hand it over. <laughs> uh, the llama too. Yeah. Yeah. Can we put a gold collar on it? Okay, cool. Perfect. That's mine. Let's go. <laughs> this is like the Mr. T of llamas. Oh my gosh, I want it. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Everybody, I'm going to, like, get everybody to, like, pile on their gold chains on a llama, and we're going to take a picture together, and it will be great. And then we will (laughs) turn that gold to the people, and the llama to its owner. But I would love a picture with a Mr. T-looking llama. (laughs) With, like, the mohawk, and put, it like, a singlet on it. I'm so excited for this. (laughs) <laughs> this needs to happen. See, now you have a resolution. It's not a resolution. I just shot a goal. <laughs> See, this is a lofty. Maybe it is a re- resolution because it's lofty. I don't have gold chains for a llama. What if we get you a little stuffed llama and we just put like costume jewelry gold chains on it? But then it won't sparkle. And how will it pity the fool? <laughs> Well, I mean, you'll have to do some of the pitying for the llama. You'll be its pity surrogate. No, I don't like that. That sounds like a weird, like, stuffed llama pity party. (laughs) So, we've got llamas, gold, what was the third thing? Machu Picchu and food. Machu Picchu. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, if you don't go to Machu Picchu when you go to Peru, did you even go to Peru? No. That's exactly. just a fact. Exactly. So. And I just want to go to the Colorado so I can go to the Stanley Hotel mm-hmm. and, like, go on the ghost tour. Yeah. As you I'm going to do it. I want to. That sounds fun. Have you seen Dr. Sleep yet? No, I have not. Did Stephen King help make that movie? Because usually any, like, movie project he's a part of, they're not good. And, like, if somebody else took over the project, it's better. (laughs) I don't know exactly. I just know that the reviews have been very mixed. Hit and miss. Yeah, I can see that. It's a Stephen King movie. I feel like that's how it goes. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Stanley Hotel is the basis for The Shining. And Dr. Sleep is a sequel to The Shining about the little boy all grown up. His name is Danny. Danny. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, it's got 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's not too bad. 
No. I feel like I I will watch it, but it's not something I would go to the theaters for. Yeah, initially I had thought it would be a Netflix movie for some reason. And so when I found out it was actually a theater movie, I went, "Eh, okay, we're going to wait till that's actually on Netflix. Yeah. There's a lot of things I'm not willing to go to the theater to watch. It's like, I'll watch that at home. I feel like the older I get and the more accessible movies are on the internet, the less I go to the theater. Also, I don't really like watching American movies dubbed into German, so that doesn't help. It's like watching old kung fu movies with less kung fu. Yeah, but those have the benefit of being kung fu movies. Yeah. Everything else is just not as fun when it's dubbed over. They're like, wait, they're still telling me about this, but they've moved on in scenes. (laughs) Or one of my favorite examples of why dubbing is really, really awful is um, in like the first season of Lost. I lived in Germany when that first came out and I loved Lost. So I watched it online in English and then it would air several weeks later in German. And there's a scene where Kate is crying and she's trying to count down from 10 in order to like calm herself down but she's being really emphatic and enunciating and her mouth is moving really distinctly and when someone says two it's a very different mouth shape than spy and just watching like the mouth the words say spy but the mouth say two like word after word none of those words have the same mouth shape from one to ten and it was just so hilariously bad. Like, it did not line up, and the sounds were so drawn out that you could distinctly mark every syllable and how different they were. And you're sitting there going, oh, right, this is why dubbing is stupid. It doesn't actually work. I don't know. I think the best movie we ever watched that was dubbed into German was Paul. <laughs> Only because Bela Bay was Paul. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty I've good. never watched that in English either, only in German. I saw it on TV once in English, and I was like, do I do I want to watch this? I watched maybe 10 minutes of it, and Seth Rogen is just not as good as Bela Bay. It is not as good. Yeah, I think they did a solid choice in casting for that, but... yeah, Sorry, Seth Rogen. I love Seth Rogen, but he's not quite the dirtbag that Bela comes across as. Yeah. Which is weird, because you, yeah. It's a very See, different dirtbag. It's like, Seth Rogen is the guy you'd meet hanging around a pot shop, and Bela is the guy you'd find in, like, a dingy lounge. Like a barfly. Yeah. Like the kind of guy who wears western shirts unironically. Or maybe hyper-ironically. <laughs> Unironically. But yeah. So, Best dubbing ever. So. Oh, yeah. It, oh, gosh. It was something. At least it was animated so they could fix it. But when it's a human, you can't fix it. It just isn't no. a match. And I think the hard part is if you've seen it in one format versus the other, whatever is your original format is probably going to be like how you prefer to watch it, continue watching it. Mm hmm. I don't know. It's not fun watching Ferris Bueller's Day Off dubbed in German when you've seen it in English and appreciate it that way. Yeah, and I had a similar experience watching the live-action Beauty and the Beast dubbed into German. So I hadn't seen it that version in English yet, but I had obviously seen the animated version. And it just wasn't good. And when you know the actor's real voices... I know what Emma Watson sounds like, and she does not sound like a middle-aged German woman. Or Josh Gad. Yeah. Oh, that one was dubbing. I, no, not a fan. Subtitles, people. Use your subtitles. It's educational. Fun and educational. So is there anything else that you're looking forward to doing next year? Not planned, no. Okay. I, yeah. I don't make plans that far in advance, I guess. I mean, I do, but I don't know. I'm not ready for any of this next year, I guess. Not yet. This year just figure it out as I go. It's hard to plan when a year just whips by that quickly. 
Well, especially like the past few months have been just going and it's like, wait a minute. Slow down. <laughs> Pump the brakes. I did not agree to this. Stop the world. I want to get off. It's spinning too fast. I could do with less cold. That would. Well, I hear that it's warm in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, I'd be go okay with doing something tropical. That would be cool and different. I don't think either one of us has ever done, like, an actual tropical anything. No. The closest I got was New Zealand, which is not tropical. No, it's not. <laughs> but it is southern. Just missed that whole tropical mark. Yeah, just kind of flew right over the tropics and kept going. Yeah. But, you know, they do, they do, they're doing all right. Being New Zealand. Being yeah. all Kiwi-like. It's good. They're doing great. Good job. But, speaking of tropical, and I can say this because this episode will come out after this happens, right? This will come out after Christmas. Let's just go with it. Uh... So... I don't weeks. know about that. It's uh, definitely coming out before Christmas. Damn. Well. You don't math so good. It's been a long day. I literally didn't notice that I was bleeding today. <laughs> Why is it always the people that are in, like, mathematical positions, the one that screw up doing math? And you're like, I don't trust you and your calculations anymore. You and my sister, and she's a math teacher. It's not that. It's just I'm so out of it. Shame. I had Shame. to. I had to explain to an accountant the other day that you can't charge us late fees on invoices that you send two weeks late. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's a good try, but nope. And he goes, "We do not accept your counter arguments." I'm like. I'm not arguing. I'm stating plain fact. If it's due on the 20th and you send it on the 10th of the next month, we're not paying you late fees. He goes, well, it, you could have gotten it sooner. Yeah. If yes, you if you did it. your part. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Working yeah. together. Yeah. Math people are fun. I don't trust any of you guys. Well, that's probably a good motto. So I guess I won't talk about our tropical surprise, but... Our? I guess yours? Our as in the people who are going. And the people who are being surprised. Not me. Not you. Uh, and I guess that's for 2019 anyway. But I'm excited there's gonna be a tropical vacation. What so do you excited. mean it's for 2019 anyway? It's in December. Oh, it's not a it's not a new goal. Okay, I get it. Exactly. Like what the hell? <laughs> uh, but like Melinda, I am also super looking forward to Peru and partaking in I bet you thought I was going to say ayahuasca. No, um part of the Inca Trail. Not all of it. Definitely not all of it. But maybe like a day of hiking, because I want to be able to say I hiked part of the trail. Um, Sarah just wants to tell everybody that she peed on the trail. I want a poop tent. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about those! Some of the, um, the guides that lead the Inca Trail hikes, and you must go with a guide, you are not allowed to do it on your own. Uh, Which I appreciate that. I do too. I feel like Don't that eliminates leave me to the wilderness. It eliminates some of the damage to the trail, but it also prevents idiots like walking off the edge of a trail. The Grand Canyon might want to look into that. So what they do is that there's little stops where you can take where there's like outhouses and pit toilets and whatnot. But if you're with one of the super fancy trail guides, they have a little collapsible tent thing. Sort of like those laundry baskets where you twist them and they kind of turn into a flat disc. It's like that, but it's a pup tent 
that you can place over a bucket toilet so you can have privacy while you poop in the wilderness. But then some stranger has to carry your poop bucket, so that's less good. I mean... There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. (laughs) And we're back to Bela Bay. That's not the bucket you want to have a hole in. No. Well, in the top. Like, the... it has a, a bucket hole. hole, but you don't want an extra hole in your bucket. <laughs> no. I think that's just a generally good rule. Like, don't let there be an extra hole in your bucket. No bucket holes. We are staunchly anti-bucket hole here. Unless it's a poop bucket. I'm running for president on the anti-poop bucket hole platform. Good luck on that. That sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I think that's the one thing that we can all unite behind, is we do not want leaking poop buckets. Republicans, Democrats, (laughs) we all just want our poop bucket to be uh, airtight. Watertight? Regardless, it needs to be tight. (laughs) I don't think we want to get into the airtight, watertight. (laughs) Just no leaking buckets. Sarah wants to poop on the trail, in a bucket, in a pup tent. And as you know, but maybe our listeners don't know, they also make conjoined poop tents, so you can poop next to your buddy. Guess what we're not getting? (laughs) I poop alone. Shit, here's the thing. I've already ordered your Christmas present. And there's no returns. Okay, I can return it. (laughs) Enjoy your poop tent. You could set it up in the backyard. Hard pass. <laughs> so the other things that I'm looking forward to next year is uh, this one is maybe it kind of depends on how things go, but I'm hoping to go to Portugal for my birthday because flights to Portugal from Dusseldorf are like 10 bucks. What the hell? So That's crazy cheap. And after... This past year, I just kind of want to take five days and do something by myself. Find a dog sitter, find a cat sitter, and just relax on a beach somewhere. Or in a park, or somewhere where I just don't know anybody. And I don't have to think about anything. It's been a very When you said in a park, I just automatically pictured you being homeless and sleeping on a bench. With my poop tent. With your poop tent. (laughs) Practice poop tent. Yeah, exactly. So, potentially, that may happen. Hopefully. And, uh, the next thing on my list is something that came up at work today, which is a trip to the Canary Islands. If you don't know the Canary Islands, if you haven't heard of them, they are a group of islands that are part of Spain but are just off the coast of northwestern Africa. So, like, the next nearest country is actually Morocco, I believe. It's, you know, that edge of Africa. And so our company does experience academies where they select a group of 10 people, ship them off somewhere to experience something. And this one is all about night sky reserves so you know how there's like forest reserves and park reserves and that kind of thing there are also night sky ones as of about 10 years now so it's areas with minimal to no light pollution so you can best see the night skies and they have one of the world's biggest telescopes there and so they have booked a trip for 10 people from our company to go and go to the observatory and experience what it is to be someplace without light pollution. Hmm, that's kind of cool. And as someone who really likes astronomy, I have never added my name to a waiting list so quickly. So soon, the trip is going to be in March, and sometime in January they will draw names. So hopefully I will be one of those ten people. Right on, that'd be pretty cool to do yeah and while it is not technically africa you can see it's like sarah palin and russia you can see africa from the backyard so potentially i could also extend the trip and like fly over to morocco maybe 
depending on how broke I am after Christmas. So, which has yeah. a high potential. <laughs> Fingers crossed, because I would really love to go and see this. Are the odds good? Probably not. There's like 1,300 people at my company. Am I gonna try? Sure. So you're like, how far away in line for the throne? <laughs> I'm at least eighth. So they don't care if Aww, I travel with the air. So you're Archie. Archie, is that the right kid? Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, we'll see. I'm hopeful. May the odds be ever in your favor. Yeah, the company does a couple of these every year, and I enter the drawing every single time, and I've never once been selected. Sucker. But the Canary Islands are really high on my list, as are seen as is seen a nighttime, a night sky reserve. I wanted to go to the one in New Zealand, but couldn't make it there, and so ever since then, it's been. Like, every time we look into traveling someplace, I'm like, ooh, where's the nearest night sky reserve? And then it's never near enough. Because, surprise, we travel to populated areas. And the reserves are in places that are not so populated. The more you know. Mm, I know. Boop boop. It's almost as if people need light to exist. Sort of, but not really, says the Dracula. I don't need that much light. Just enough. <laughs> just I mostly candle. need light to read. Yeah. So those are the places I want to go. And a couple of the goals, just general goals I have for the next year. I want to take a multi-day trip with just a purse. Like, if you read her packing list, that website, not her as in some random person, um, Brooke wrote an article about how she traveled for, like, three weeks with just a 15-liter purse and how freeing that was. So potentially, if I'm going to Portugal, I would like to do just a purse trip then because I like the idea of being more mobile and not so tied down to dragging stuff around. Another thing I would like to do is to take a trip with the dog. Not far, just take him somewhere. Because traveling with a dog is really fun. A little bit challenging, but fun. And going to see like a forest somewhere in another country and take him hiking and whatnot would be nice. Because Moose too would like to poop on unknown and new trails. He doesn't need a poop tent, he needs a poop pup tent. A what? A poop pup tent. It's like the same thing. Yeah, but it's for pups. Or children, you know, same difference. <laughs> I would also, at some point next year, like to find time to go camping. That could also be the trip with the dog. Taking him camping would be fun, I think. He's very outdoorsy. Because, you know, he's a dog. Poops outside on a regular. It's yeah. cool. He's very free like that. He doesn't need a tent. Oh my god, how extra would it be to be a person who walked your dog and was like, oh wait, he's got to poop. One sec, I gotta set up a tent over him. Privacy shield! <laughs> Don't look! Just he's get him a pooping. sensor bar and carry it around. <laughs> that could also help tie into your last thing that you want to do. I mm, Does it though? <laughs> Censored photographs of your dog. Pooping. Uh, well, yeah, okay. I think he should that's have to carry- That's a series that's- Go ahead. Nope. That's a series that'll get you in a museum? <laughs> I mean, it probably could. Anything could go in a museum if you sell it well enough. It's you true. Sell- you just have to uh, hard sell that shit. So my last goal for this list is that I want to work on my photography skills. I think I'm an okay photographer. I take okay pictures. But you know what? They're all from the exact same angle because I know what looks okay. <laughs> I have like maybe a hundred photos of different buildings all from the same steep angle from below. Maybe... But that's just how, what was it, Norway? Sweden? That's just how their buildings go. <laughs> well, if you look at my Instagram, like it's a lot of buildings from the same angle. So maybe next year I can work on that and diversify a little bit. Work the angles, as it were. 
I was trying to think of like a good RuPaul <laughs> quip or something. I, I got nothing. Okay. Well, that is what I am looking forward to for next year. Solid list. Fairly yeah. achievable. Lots of pooping in outdoor situations. <laughs> this is how we become the mad poopers. That sounds like a serial pooper. Yeah. That can be all you. I don't need to be a part of that. <laughs> but I need a partner in crime. If I'm the mad pooper, what's your superhero name? Or your supervillain name? I don't know. We need to work on that. That's your goal for next year. Come up with a supervillain name. Otherwise, I'm going to have to give one to you. I mean, you know, Satan works pretty good for me. That one's taken. Satan Jr. With a bow. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty know. good costume. I'm. Hmm. Let's workshop that. It sounds like the weird lobster villain from Powerpuff Girls, though. God, what was his name? I don't remember. I just remember Mojo Jojo. Because it's fun to say. And the guy with the meat ray. Was that Fuzzy Lumpkins? Yes. And he turned Bubbles' pigtail into a drumstick. The cruelty is unimaginable. Oh, Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> so. But yeah, is that everything for a brief 2020 goal? I think so. I guess if you are someone who is thinking about traveling, it, it doesn't hurt to write down what it is you want. So you have something to reference. Why am I saving this money when I could be out doing this? Why am I, I don't know, why am I setting aside vacation dates for something that I'm not sure that it's ever going to happen? Because if you know what you want, you can work towards it. If you're just kind of winging it, you can still do it. It's just, I don't know. Having a goal is not, it can only help. Don't dream it, be it. Be best. You know, things we learn from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Or Melania Trump, who's her own type of horror show. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was sort of the point of this exercise for me, was that, oh right, saving money. This is why I'm saving money. These are the things I want to do. Saving money is just good in general for, you know, that safety net. It is, but, like, I have regular savings and then I have a vacation savings. And every time I'm like, oh, but this is on sale, I should get it. I'm like, no, no, no. Remember, Peru is happening. Put the money in the, in the, the piggy bank and leave it there. Oh, I was gonna say, or else it gets the hose again? <laughs> or else it gets the hose again. It puts the money in the piggy bank or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> exactly. That is definitely logical thoughts. I don't know why you're laughing at this. Um, um, I have no comment. Hannibal Lecter would be so proud of me. It could be Hannibal Lecter Jr. Hannibal Lecter mm, with the bow. I'm not into the whole cannibalism thing. That's a good cover story. That'll totally hold up in court. No, no. Because I have tattoos, and cannibals don't like tattoos. We learned that from Jeffrey Dahmer. So I, <laughs> in theory, should be safe from cannibals. But that doesn't mean that you can't be a cannibal. Safe from cannibals! Yes. We weren't asking whether or not we thought you were going to be eaten. We were asking you, whether on the or other not hand, you would be You're eating. probably still screwed. I have a tattoo. No. Yeah, but like, they can eat around that. It's fine. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that I need more tattoos. Yeah, so then you could be saved from cannibals. Are you paying? No. God, no. Do you want me to be eaten by cannibals? That's not what my safety net's for. Well, that's your problem. You're... That's that's a personal problem. You're a terrible friend. You guys, she just said she wants me to be eaten by cannibals, and she's unwilling to help me. Well, you left yourself... 
to be eaten by cannibals. Rude. God, I thought suck, we were friends. Suck you. You should have gotten started on that sooner like I did. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. 2020. We are getting there way faster than we probably imagined. Mm-hmm. So, New decade. New you. It's better than a new year, new you. It's a new decade. And technically... The decade of travel. The decade of adventures. The decade of pooping outside in a tent. It's uh, the uh, dawn of a new era. It's the age of Aquarius. Yes, that. Okay. And Moose has come over to be loud as hell. Moose! Stop. Hey, don't scratch the bed. Come here. Come here. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm about to be lick mauled by a dog. Do you want to give us your tip of the week? Tip of the week is make small achievable goals because resolutions are too much. It's too much. Do something easy. I mean, maybe you don't have all the time in the world that you can take from your work. Just plan a weekend trip. Make a goal of something small and achievable and then you can do it and then you can build up from there. It's a whole new decade. Make the best out of it. Make it the, the decade of travel that gives you 10 years to figure out, you know, a destination, save up if you need to. Just try and make it a good decade. It's the Roaring Twenties again. Let's do this. <laughs> it's only going to end with a depression, so we got to make the most of it while we can. Let's hope on not the depression era afterwards, but it's it's a whole new decade. You know, let's go. Let's do this. Get out there. It's an adventure. Go on an adventure. And get this dog off of me. <laughs> no, he lives here now. He's going to do the podcast with me. Um, we're letting you go, Sarah. I'm sorry. Oh, that's going to make riveting material. It's just going to be you talking and him, like, lapping at the microphone. <laughs> I don't quite see a problem with this other than, like, the slurping. <laughs> it oh, might be too a, much to listen to. He's a big slurper. Okay, anyway, on that lovely note, I hope you're all imagining what that would sound like. And, uh, bye! <laughs> it's an adventure! So, adventuresome! <laughs> oh boy, that's terrible. Okay, bye! <laughs> bye! Hey everyone, thanks again for listening to another episode of Seattle to Unknown. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and subscribe so you never miss a thing. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest under c to unknown That's S-E-A-T-O Unknown. Or you can check us out on our website, wwwc 2 unknowncom Want to know what we do on our off time? You can find both Sarah and I on Twitter and Instagram. Sarah is at S-A-R underscore S, and I'm at Hooligan Monster on both. We would also love to hear from you. Send us an email with your stories and travel tips to c to unknown at gmail.com. Until then, it's an adventure. Bye!